We're in our <clears throat> finishing up our series huh, on uh, praise and worship, finishing up our spiritual revival series. I feel like I experienced some spiritual revival today. How about you? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you thank Jesus for that? We thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank the worship team for... This is where I want to live, right here. Amen? Is it just me? So, um, today's a little different. Um, I have less of a teaching, more of, um, I want to provoke you to experience something. More of this. Thank you, my fellow eight, my Enneagram sister. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about Revelation worship. Uh, but my, I, have a, I have one goal, and, and it's, since it's one goal, I'm going to put it up. Uh, I have one goal for this message is to provoke people to see more of God and expect more of God in worship. <clears throat> to see more of God and expect more of God in worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did anybody see anything in worship today? Just out of curiosity. Did you, did you see anything? Yeah? Hallelujah. Raquel, just let it happen. Just let them do it. Hallelujah. You know, Revelation worship, uh, as, as I announced this message, it's, it's kind of a play on words. I wanted to talk about worship in the book of Revelation, but I also wanted to talk about the revelation that you can get in, just leave her alone, the revelation that you get in worship. And I, and I, want, I want to talk about, about both. Uh, but I may not do either well because I'm a little awestruck at the moment. Uh, this week, I'm going to teach out of the book of Revelation. Next week, I'm going to teach on the book of Revelation. Um, and if you're ready uh, to hear about people getting punished and killed, you're going to be disappointed. Uh, I'm going to focus far more on Jesus <laughs> and the good news that he is. Now, <clears throat> worship, you know, I'm pretty excited about this message uh, because uh, it has transformed my life. Uh, I don't talk about it a lot. I just minister out of it. Uh, but I kind of want to kind of like uh, uh, pull back the veil and show you how the sausage is made, if that makes sense. And that can get messy and that can look a little weird, but it tastes delicious. For us at Revival Life Church, worship isn't just us singing songs and getting excited or getting, getting goosebumps. W worship is a supernatural encounter with God. It is an event where we have a supernatural encounter with God. And you should expect nothing less when you go into worship. We should expect nothing less than a supernatural encounter with God huh, in worship. And a part of the reason I'm teaching on this is because of what's coming. We need to have a grid for what's coming. Um, and uh, uh, some of you are just called to live in this. And someone needs to tell you, hey, it's okay. You're not weird. Like, you actually believe the stuff in the, in the book. You're not weird. Uh, you, you've been in worship and you felt like there's got to be more. You're not weird. This is actually the call from heaven for you to be a worshiper and you encounter God in worship. Amen? And so God... Um, <clears throat> God gave me, um, as I was trying to work this thing out, uh, God just spoke to me. You know, it's a funny thing that happens when we don't know what, what we're supposed to do. You know, as a last resort, what do we do? Pray, right? Like, you know, everything else failed. We might as well ask God, right? And so finally, I'm like, God, you know, what, what? And uh, in, in, in an instant, he downloaded this message and uh, this graphic I'm about to show you. He didn't make the graphic I did. If he made it, it'd be much better. And so this is what he told me. <clears throat> this is what he told me about worship. He told me, walk in the Spirit, pray down the Spirit, get caught up in the Spirit. This is what he showed me, and this is, this is and then which leads to us walking in the Spirit. This, this is kind of the pattern he showed me, and this is what I want to provoke in your life today. All right, can I do that? Can I do that today? Yeah. I'm, I'm asking for permission, um, but I'm going to do it anyways. Uh, I, you know, God is actually expecting worship. Right? Like he, 
He's actually expecting worship. He's not, he's not necessarily expecting songs, and he's not necessarily expecting a band, though they're both proper. Uh, and he's not necessarily expecting um, uh, fog machines and lights, though we're going to try to get some of those, you know, because all the cool kids have them. We want to be cool. Um, but, <clears throat> uh, but he is expecting worship, and worship comes from the heart. Worship comes from the heart. Amen? <clears throat> How many would agree with me when I tell you worship is what's happening in heaven? Who, who would agree with me? Worship is what's happening in heaven. Do, do you agree with that? How do you know that? How do you know that? How do you know that worship is happening in heaven? How do you know? Because the Bible tells you so? How, how did the Bible know? How did they figure that out? Someone saw it. Someone saw it. Anybody in here is someone? Anybody in here is someone? I feel like I'm a someone. I feel like you could be a someone too. Because my Bible tells me that, there, that God is no respecter of persons. I just, I just, I hope, I hope some of you are getting provoked right now. I know y'all don't want to help me this morning. That's all right. I'm going to preach it either way. I would appreciate it if you would help me, but that's all right. I'll do it on my own. But God is expecting worship. And people went and saw this worship in heaven, and they reported it to us. Now, <clears throat> remember I told you last week, when I read the Bible and I talk to God, and if something resonates in my spirit, I know it's mine. Yeah. Now, I may, need, I may need to contend for it. I may need to work for it. I may need to fast and pray for it. I don't need to carry my phone around while I'm preaching. I know that much. Um, <clears throat> I'm not that cool. Uh, uh, but if I can see it, I know, it's, I know it's, it's mine. I believe I can have it. How about you? I know it's mine. I don't have to wait any longer. I can contend and, and I can have it. And, and I believe like if, if John, if John can see in the heaven, why can't I? Now, I'm not going to write the Bible. And what God shows me may not be for you. It may just be for me, right? We're not adding to the scripture. But then again, the scripture is written for a reason, not so that we don't need God. Hello. Right? The Scripture is written to show us what, what most of Scripture is written to, to explain to us what we've experienced with God. Here's the, here's, here's, here's the problem I have. <clears throat> the problem I have is um, <clears throat> in, our, in our effort to make God so clean and tidy, we explain away most of God. And He's just not that neat and tidy. Walking with God is just not that simple, right? Can anybody agree with me? Like, there's, gonna be, like, there's some mysteries, Amen. There's some mysteries out there in walking with God. There, there's, there's untidy. There's, there's, you know, we saw him crucified on Saturday, I mean on Friday, and on Sunday we saw him resurrected, but there's a whole lot of Saturday in Christianity. There's a whole lot of, I don't know what's coming next in Christianity. Can, can we just be honest? I love to show you, you know, 10 steps in knowing everything there is to know about your walk with God. But most of those lists are made up. You know that, right? They're not actually in the Bible. They're, they're just not there. And um, we just make it so tidy. And then someone has a faith crisis and the whole house of cards falls apart. Instead of saying, there's mysteries. We just don't know. There's, there's actual suffering in Christianity. And it's part of intimacy. We're called to live inst intimate lives with God. Um, <clears throat> My family has gone on vacation, and it's created a great intimacy with us because we have shared experiences. But there's nothing like caring for a sick loved one for eight years. That creates a whole nother type of intimacy. Do, do, do anybody know what I'm talking about? You care for someone for years in their sickness, and then there's an intimacy that's, that's created. And that's part of Christianity as well. Jesus did say that we were going to perfect his sufferings. And we need to do that by the power of the Holy Spirit, not by excuses, not by I can't wait to get out of this, but by I'm, I'm fellowshipping with him in this Saturday. In this Saturday, I don't know what's coming, but I know he's here with me in the darkness. I know that he's here with me. I know, I know. What do you do in that? Man, it's hard. And if anybody tells you different, anybody tells you it's because you have a lack of faith or you just don't trust enough, they're just, they're just oversimplifying over this thing. They're, they're leaving all the mystery out. Like, 
Like to have a good gumbo takes a long time to cook. All they, all they got is ingredients. Like you got to cook it all together. It takes a while. This faith walk takes a while. And sometimes Sunday is so amazing because Saturday was so long. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and so the, the goal here is to live connected to the Spirit. I mean, we have to live connected to the Holy Spirit. Can you imagine, like, Jesus got baptized in the Holy Spirit, right? And then immediately he was taken to the desert to be tested. Aren't you thankful that's not your testimony? Aren't you glad that God had, like, this bubble of grace on you for a little while before you had some real testing? Amen. We've seen too many people fail the first test, right? <clears throat> but Jesus had an intimate relationship with Holy Spirit. And he walked out of that desert in the power of the Holy Spirit. And we need intimacy with Holy Spirit to make it through this walk. We have to put up my graphic. We have to walk in the Spirit. We have to walk in the Spirit. We have to live life walking in the Spirit. I'm going to talk about that for a moment. Thank you, Mike. <clears throat> See, yeah, Mike is amazing. Listen, this is what walking in the Spirit means. Walking in the Spirit means who God is and what He has told me about my life is important. It's important enough that I alter my life to line up with it. Amen. That means I, I hear something from God uh, and I actually, I live in that revelation. I want to live in a place where I stay connected to God. And you can do that. I don't care who's lied to you. You can actually live life connected with Him. You can live life connected to God, and not for nothing, this was actually his, his intention. His intention was that you would never be separated. Nowhere in the Word does it say that he gave you the Spirit, and then it comes off. It doesn't say that he takes it back. It doesn't say, he said, he said it's yours, that you would be filled. And, and we need to live connected, walking with Holy Spirit. And the easiest way to do that is to pray in tongues more. Yielding your body to the Spirit of God. If you don't pray in tongues, we're going to go and worship, and then just by faith, open your mouth and begin speaking. Amen. I just feel like in this atmosphere, you could get filled sovereignly. Just, you know, take a stab at it. Who knows? You know, in, 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 in 1 Thessalonians, Paul told the church in Thessalonica to pray without ceasing. And I don't think he meant a prayer meeting. I think he meant live a life where we're connected with God and we never disconnect. The relationship never breaks. Be mindful of his presence. We, 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 um, this needs to be the goal of our lives. I want to stay connected to God. I, wanna, I, wanna, I, don't, I wanna never want to break fellowship with him. I want to live in a place where he is very near. And that generally takes you just recognizing that he's very near. You're just recognizing... That he's near. Amen? I, um, we, I, I keep talking about this, keep bringing it up, but my um, family, we went uh, to Puerto Rico on a vacation uh, this summer, and we try to go on vacation every single summer um, and some other holidays. Anytime my wife feels like, you know, there's a rule that we should be taking a vacation is when, like, that's when we take vacations. My wife decides, oh, no, no, we're supposed to take a vacation. Okay, I guess we're taking a vacation. So the, there, was a, there was a moment on our vacation um, where our family just had like a really, really, really neat time. Actually, there were two, but one was really special. And every now and then, when I'm in my morning devotions and I'm thanking God, I'll just close my eyes and I'll be back in that moment. And I'll just think about the, 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 what my kids' faces looked like and what the, the, the peace and presence that was in the car. And I'm just taken right back and that intimacy with my family is just restored. Uh, does, that, does that make sense? Wow. And I try to do that. I try when I'm in like really good moments with my family. I try to just be quiet. And I try somehow, I don't, I don't know if this is even possible. I try to imprint this on my spirit. Like I'm going to want to remember this moment in 15 years. Amen. Does that make sense? We'll be around the dinner table and my son will be laughing. Amen. No, no, come on. And when my son starts cracking up, his name's laughter, right? It's Isaac. Like he laughs, right? And, uh, and sometimes when he's, like, caught up in joy, I will just, like, Lord, I want to I see that. 
I'm getting a little choked up talking about this. I just want to see this forever. I don't want to forget this moment. I don't have the best memory. I don't remember people's names. I don't remember any of my teachers from school. I, I don't remember stuff. Like, for whatever reason, I, I, I don't. And people have to remind me things, like my age and stuff. And, um, but there's things that, like, I'm just like, if, if there's anything I can do to remember this, I want to remember it. And I believe like, that's what Paul was talking about. We need to live life with the testimony of God fresh on the inside of us. Fresh on the inside of us. It can't just be something that happened and we put it in a journal and now it's on the wall and it's a memorial. This book can't just be a memorial. The, the, the book has to be, this is the life that we can live right now. And I get to be back intimate with my family every time I meditate on those memories. I'm as clo- they're as close as that memory. God is as close as your awareness of His presence. He's as close as your awareness of His presence. And He wants us to live our life aware of His presence. And as we look at the, the book of Revelation, this is, this is kind of what we see. Um, I, uh, for those who feel called to ministry, I feel like I'm supposed to talk to people who feel called to ministry um, this morning because I know there's a bunch in here uh, or God wouldn't have given me the message. Uh, before I ever got in ministry, I would, um, on w- years, uh, on Saturday nights, I would sanctify my Saturday nights. Uh, even though I knew I was not going to minister at all the next day, uh, at a certain time frame, we would, the house would have to turn off the TVs. We, 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 just, we would just be prepare our spirit for Sunday morning. And uh, I would just be ready. I would come Sunday morning, worshiping, ready to encounter God. Like, I knew I need to encounter God. Uh, and I need to sanctify myself in this time of corporate ministry. And so I want to come into the house of God already in the spirit. Does that make sense? Yeah. This is what we see of John. So John is on a prison island separated from the church, right? He's not with the other saints, right? He's there by himself. But there's this pattern in scripture that you'll see if you look for it, where people worship at the time of worship, even though they're not at the place of worship. And what they're doing is they are connecting their faith with those who are worshiping right then. See, this morning we're here in this church in Boca Raton, but we're not worshiping God alone. Not even just the angels I'm talking about. I'm talking about there's churches all over Boca Raton worshiping God right now. And that multiplies what we're doing this morning. And not only all over Boca, but all over South Florida, there's churches worshiping the same God. Now they may have different titles on the, on the door, and they may have different creeds on their website, but we're worshiping the same Jesus, right? And so all over Florida, there's, we're gathering together with them all over the United States. We're in, in the persecuted church, all over the persecuted church in Mexico, and the persecuted church in the Middle East and the persecuted church in India and the persecuted church in the Ukraine and the persecuted church in Palestine. Like we are joining with all of them worshiping God right now and it is multiplying what's happening right now. And so, so you see that in scriptures. I don't have time to teach on that right now, but uh, John was on the island of Patmos and, and, and it says that on the Lord's day, now uh, the, the, on, uh, it says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Now they used to worship on the Sabbath. Right? But the Sabbath wasn't made for God. It was made for? All right. Someone read the Bible. Come on. Jesus said, (laughs) man was not made for the Sabbath, but the Sabbath was made for? Right. And so they used to worship on the Sabbath, but then in honor of the crucifixion of Jesus, they called Sunday the Lord's Day. They stopped worshiping on the day made for man. They started worshiping on the day made for God, the Lord's Day. And so he says, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day, and I heard behind me a loud voice. So So John, on the day, wasn't waiting for a worship team, wasn't waiting for a choir. He was already in the spirit. I I, I need you to get this. He was already in the spirit. If if like you, if you don't set up your Sunday to be in the spirit in the time of worship, you're going to miss a half of what happens in here. You're going to come in and you're going to be dusting off the day while other people are caught up in the third heaven, Right? Like, you don't want to miss that moment where you're joining with all the churches all over the world worshiping Jesus. So you want to be in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Here's what happened to John. He was already in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice like the sound of a trumpet. Now, here's kind of, here's kind of an odd thing. When, when we teach the Bible and we teach about how to interact with God, we really want to be, <clears throat> how, how do I say it? How do I say it? We don't want to be weird, right? Uh, but weird is basically anything more spiritual than you. 
right? And lukewarm is anything less spiritual than you. That's what I have discovered. When I've, when I've asked people, what do you mean by weird? What they basically mean is anything more spiritual than me is weird. And lukewarm is anything less spiritual than me. So if you're in a church that lifts one hand, people lift two hands are weird, super spiritual, right? If you're in a church where people jump, if you run, you're weird, right? But if you're a church that runs and then if you do cartwheels, you're weird, right? Like weird depends on what you are used to. What if we let the Bible tell us what weird is? Right? So John is writing this book of Revelation, and he's very clear on who this book is to. Right? And, and so, he, so, so here's, here's how John opens the book. In Revelation, uh, in the very first couple verses, he says, he says hey, uh, Jesus Christ had a revelation. Now, that's, that's an understatement right there, right? He's like, the revelation of Jesus Christ, meaning like this revelation that Jesus got. Like, like that needs to be stated. He says, Jesus got a revelation and he told it to an angel and he told the angel to come tell it to me and write. And then I, after he tells it to me, I'm supposed to write it down and I'm supposed to send it to seven churches. Now, can you imagine someone writes you a letter and in the very first line, they say, Jesus told an angel something and the angel came and told me that Jesus said it and I'm supposed to write it down and send it to you. That would be weird. Yes. That's Bible though. That's like foundational. That's Bible. Now, don't send me any letters. Like, I know some of you feel like, finally, now I get to tell the pastor. Like, that's not what I'm talking about. <clears throat> or you can send me letters. Don't shout it out, right? Because then we're going to test it. <clears throat> so John is in the spirit on the Lord's day. Like, after he tells him, an angel came and told me what Jesus told him to tell me that I'm telling you. After that, he says, oh, by the way, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Oh, well, that's, that's good to know. Like, that's okay. And so because he was on the spirit, in the spirit on the Lord's day, like, he, he was able to receive this revelation, right? Like, and, and you want to be able to come in ready to receive revelation when you're in worship. Like, you want to come in ready. Like, you want to come in, like, you want to spend the week trying to connect with God. Worship, like, keep Thanksgiving on your heart, you know, be praising God, pray in tongues, Pray in tongues more, right? Like share your faith. You want to, you want to, you want to, like we have this teaching on our website, on, uh, on our YouTube called like, Hearing the Voice of God, uh, and it's, it's super, super, super short. Uh, we did it on a Friday night. I think Josh Kopka taught it, and um, it, it's a way of journaling and hearing God, and I just recommend you all do it, yeah. period. Like I hear God so clearly uh, all the time, but it takes effort to hear from God. Some of you are like, I hear from them all the time. Well, well, maybe, but most people, like, it takes, it took a while for you to get there. It takes a while. It's like a, it's like a muscle. If you don't work out for a long time, you don't just hit the bench again, and then all of a sudden you're benching what you were when you were 22, right? Like, you, you got to get back. It's, it's, it's unfortunate, isn't it? It's part of the fall. We should be redeemed from the fall, right, Chris? Yeah. People do that. You know, there's, a, there's, this, uh, there, there's an actual category of injury uh, that they see a lot um, uh, in ERs, and uh, it's called weekend warrior syndrome. This is absolutely true. Anybody in medicine knows this. It's guys in their 30s who go to work out thinking they could do what they did in their 20s and haven't worked out since. And so they show up, and their knees are blown out, and their back is injured. They got some rotator cuff injuries. It's called weekend warrior syndrome. Like, no, 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 I work, I used to bench, I used to play soccer every weekend. Let me go out and play with these 22-year-olds. Yeah, don't do it, right? Like, that is a trap. It's a trap of the devil, right? You find old people to work out with. And then work your way down, right? Just work your way younger. Start with somebody with a cane, right? Play with them. <laughs> right? Then someone with, like, some orthopedic shoes, play with them. <laughs> and then work your way down to people your age, then maybe the people younger than you. That's what you want to do, right? Like start yourself with encouragement. Don't, don't, just don't do it because you're like, I just want to see if I still got it. You don't, right? You just don't. Let me help you out. You don't. You don't still got it, right? You don't got it, right? Because it takes effort, right? It takes effort. And it's the same thing in our spirit life. It takes effort. We actually have to, we have to be working on our relationship with God, right? Ignore your wife for six months and see if your relationship is still as good, right? Like, just see how that works out, right? Like, it, it's not going to be as good. You actually have to put an effort into the relationship. And so we have to be walking in the Spirit, right, so we can be building this relationship with God. John was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day, and the Lord told him to do a bunch of stuff. 
And he started doing it, right? And if you obey the Lord in what he tells you when you're walking in the Spirit, then you get to move on to the next phase, which is praying down the Spirit. See, you have to spend time connecting with God who is Spirit. I'll say that again. You have to spend time connecting with God who is spirit. You see, in Acts chapter 2, they were praying and they had already had the spirit because God gave it, or Jesus gave it to them when he sent them out, right? And so, but they hadn't been filled yet. What happened? They prayed and they prayed down the spirit into the room and all of a sudden, everybody was getting touched by God. See, we can't just praise God with words. In John 4, he says, God is, what's that? Spirit. God is spirit in worship and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. And I'm here to tell you today, somebody is going to get their Pentecost today. Somebody is going to connect with God in spirit. If you haven't already, now come on. If you haven't already, somebody today is going to gain the ability to get caught up in worship. Take her down one touch for me if you would there, Brando. See, here's what happens. When you spend time with God, he's going to start showing you things. Right? Like the more you spend time with people, the more they show you of their stuff. you like, I didn't even know that about you. You spend time with God, he just starts showing you things. You can expect him to show you things. <clears throat> In our times of worship as a church, I expect stuff to happen. And if it doesn't happen, we're not moving on. We're just not moving on. We've had this saying from the beginning... The only thing worse than Jesus not being in your spirit, and excuse me, Jesus not being in your service is Jesus not being in your service and pretending like he is. We're not going to fake it. We're not going to teach people how to act like they're filled with the spirit. We're not going to teach our worship team to act spirit filled. We're actually going to be filled with the spirit to the point where other people can see it. That's a good word. And so on Sunday mornings, I have expectation, and we're not moving on until something happens. And so sometimes we have to wait. We have, we have to wait. Sometimes you have to just wait on God to come through for you. You have to wait. God wants to know that you will wait for him at times. That's a good word. God wants to know if you'll wait. Are you in a rush? Do you already have a plan that God might mess up if you have to wait? Are you convinced that he's going to disappoint you so you don't want to put too much hope in him? Like, no, we have, we have to wait on him. The psalmist said, wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. You know, it takes courage to wait on God. It takes courage to wait on God. It's easy to march on without him. I mean, like, have you noticed God? They say he's an on-time God. They don't say he's an early God. They don't say he came through early. They don't say he came through before I had to wait. They say he's an on-time God. He's an on-time God. Like, man, I like to be early, God. And God's like, I'm good. I'm good. Sometimes you just have to wait on him. Sometimes you just got to tell people. They're like, well, why don't you just move there, and then this will happen, and then that will happen. You're like, I would love to do that, except God told me to stay here, and now I'm waiting on him. Because my God cannot lie. Do you hear what I'm saying? There's very few testimonies that move people like, we were in need, and we just did everything we knew how, and I went ahead and did this, and we just left that, and now we're here. Okay, what God doing all that? Um, I'm good. Good. I like, we waited on God and he came through. Amen. Amen. It takes courage to wait on God. Psalm 130, I wait for the Lord. My soul does wait. And in his word do I hope. That word the psalmist is talking about there, he's not talking about I'm not hoping in the Bible. He's talking about I'm hoping in the word that God gave me when I spent time alone with him. He spoke something to me. And I'm letting that become part of me. I'm walking in the spirit so much that I'm allowing his word to dictate my life. And now I'm praying his spirit down into my situation based on the promise he gave me. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope I'm encouraging somebody right now. Isaiah 40, he says, Yet those who wait in the Lord will regain their strength. 
They will mount up like wings, like eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. Do you feel tired and weary? Like, wait on the Lord, maybe. I feel like he told me to tell you this because he's going to come through. Are you tired of running? Wait on God. Wait on God. Wait on what he said. I, 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 yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. I love seeing people come in the breakthrough. I hate, I hate, hate is probably too strong a word, though. It's probably not. I hate telling people over and over and over again, remember the word that we keep talking about that you got that you're supposed to wait on and then you stop waiting and then everything gets messed up and then you wait a little bit more and then you stop waiting and you mess everything up and then we you wait a little bit more. And then like, how about we just wait until God comes through? Let's just wait and let's just see what God's going to do. Let's just, let's just trust God once. Like, as much as I'm enjoying this cycle, let's just wait on God. I don't know. What does that mean? Is that okay? Okay. Remember when, <laughs> remember when we talked about the house of God? When we talked about the uh, indications of what a house of God is? This is what we expect on Sunday. See, without God, there's just a building. I don't care what you put above the door. It's just a building. But it's not, it's not the house of God until we hear his voice, until the angels are present, right? Until, until we experience his spirit, until we see Jesus moving in the room. When we sense the atmosphere shift, that, that's, that's when it becomes the house of God. And this is what we wait for in worship in this church. We're waiting for God to move. See heaven open. So did you experience open heaven in worship? I, I saw open heaven over you. Did you experience anything you could share? All right, come on. If you're going to use that mic right there. I looked at you. And I saw an open heaven. I was like, ooh, she's getting something good. <laughs> Amen. Um, part of it I saw um, kind of like what Anastasia saw last week during worship. Um, she's like, don't take my testimony. Sorry. Um, it was like I could see myself worshiping like in the picture. I'm, I can imagine, like, imagine what I'm reading. <clears throat> like in Revelation 4 and how they're talking about the throne room and like I can picture it. So I felt like I was seeing that, like I was standing there worshiping. But then I like, I open my eyes and look and then everybody else was standing there worshiping. Like the entire church was standing there worshiping and and I could see the angels and just the focus and the worship on God. And then I saw like how he's tuning into our worship. Like, that word makes sense like he inclined his ear toward our yeah, worship yeah like like Turned oh it's time us. like oh, that's good this is the time they're worshiping i want to be there like that kind of a tune in does that make sense yes it was very good did you have a testimony too come on <laughs> leave your coffee there <laughs> so um at the end of like the fourth song right before announcements and offering hold on we're not rapping. We have to. Sorry. There you go. Go ahead. Um, I was. This is what I'm encouraging sorry. you against. There you go. Sorry. Right there. I was like talking to my angels okay. that I I worship with and that like I minister with, and I was talking to them. I don't know if they were ready for that, but go ahead. Sorry. I was like talking to them, and then I saw like um like a crowd of angels come around, just kind of like listening, and then I was like, "Are you ready?" And everyone, they were like, "Yeah." And so then I saw them all walk out into the, where everyone was standing and one behind each person. And then we were started singing the last song. And I was like, Jesus, like, what, what should I do? What should, should I just wait? Should I, like, what should I do? And so I waited. And then um, <laughs> I was like, Jesus, would you, do you want to come worship with us? And he's like, I love worshiping. I love worshiping with you. And then he came. It was like worshiping. We're all worshiping together. And then I got down on my knees, and right when I got down on my knees, everyone started, like, that's when everyone started, like, yelling. When the room blew up. Yeah. 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 And then I just looked up, and I saw the angels behind everyone um, worshiping with them, kind of. And I asked God that they would be able to worship with that angel, like, how I worship with my angel, like, that it would be, like. Interaction? Be, yeah. It was really good. Amen. All right. <laughs> so. So, so she's 16. 
And so if the Lord says, come to me like a child, there's your, there, there's your measuring stick right there. So that leads to my third point. Put up my graphic, please. Get caught up in the spirit. I, um, the moment she's talking about, I know the moment she's talking about. Because at that moment, the presence of God was in the room so strong. And I don't know who said it first, me or Holy Spirit. And it was like, you ready? Like, let's go. And instantly we got caught up. And the room exploded. And uh, Revelation 4. Okay, so John, don't put it up yet. John did what God told him to do. Well, actually what the angel told him to do that Jesus told him, right? So he writes these letters. He says basically, you know, just like if you read 1 Corinthians, it's like, oh, to the, Paul, to the letter to the church in Corinth, right? Or to the church in Ephesus, or right? So he says, you're going to write this letter to seven churches. But instead of writing it seven times, he puts seven greetings in uh, Revelation chapter 2 and 3 uh, in there, you know, to the church of Philadelphia and Sardis and Laodicea, like, all right? Uh, and so he does these, these seven greetings, Right? And so he obeyed what God told him to do once the Spirit came. Right? And so what happens when you obey? Revelation 4.1. After these things I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. Now, I want, I want that. I want the door open in heaven. Right? He says, and the first voice, which is the angel, which I heard, like the sound of a trumpet, this is what he said the angel sounded like, said, Come up here, and I will show you what may, must take place after these things. And the Bible then says, immediately I was in the Spirit. Immediately I was in the Spirit. Now the Spirit he's talking about is not like I was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. Immediately he was in heaven. Because heaven is in the Spirit. Right? Immediately I was in the Spirit. I know this sounds deep, but I just want to provoke some of you people. I want to provoke some of you people. And so when he gets caught up, what does he see? He sees worship, right? He sees worship all over heaven. You have to be in the Spirit to understand the things of the Spirit. If you had not been in this service and you had heard what she'd said, you would thought she was weird. When you're in here, you're like, well, that sounds perfectly logical to me, actually, at this moment. I don't know how I'll explain it to people on the street, but that absolutely sounds perfectly logical. She was having a conversation with her angel, and then things got caught up, and then she was talking to Jesus, and then the room. That sounds about right, right? Like, that sounds, but if you're not in the Spirit, that you, don't understand, you have to be in the Spirit to understand the things of the Spirit. Because only spiritual people can understand spiritual things. Does that make sense? That's why atheists can't understand Christianity. You have to have the Spirit. Let, let me say this. I'm going a touch long. Actually, I'm still, the service is going long. I'm good. I feel pretty good about that. <laughs> Corey's part went long. I'm good. For those of you who've studied law and studied criminal justice, you know, there's um, a high likelihood if someone is convicted on the voice of one witness, it, it's, it's, hard, it's not good. It, there's a very high likelihood that, the pers- that, that, that that one eyewitness is wrong. It's just, it's a given fact now. One witness, especially if they don't know the person personally, is not good evidence, right? It's just, it's, one testimony is not good evidence. And the Bible tells us, like, not, don't just get one person to hear something. No, 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 no revelation is, 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 is personal. No revelation is captured in one person. It's, you can't build doctrine on one person's revelation. Would you agree with that? that? That's true, right? Now, if three people came and said, no, we saw, we saw this guy do this. And you're like, hmm. Now, do they know each other? Do they have something against this guy? Is it possible they conspired? Now, when you have 10 people who don't know the person, and they all say, we saw him, now you got a pretty ironclad case, right? Statistically, it's almost impossible that 10 people independently saw something and they were all wrong. It's almost statistically impossible for 10. Now, what if a thousand people saw it? What if a thousand people came and said, no, we all independently in different places at different times saw that, well, now it's like, well, of course. Like, like you know um, the, the flat earthers? Have you, have you followed that at all? It's pretty, it's comedy, right? You follow it because it's so funny, right? And, and here's, here's the, let me help you the argument 
Let me give you the flat earth argument if you don't understand it. Let me, try to, let me try to summarize it right now. Here's the flat earth argument. I don't understand science, right? That is, that is the flat earth argument. I do not know science. I don't understand it. Therefore, I reject it. That's the flat earth argument. Are, are, you, are you following me at all? If you're getting your science on, on, um, on Facebook, it's, it, it just take it up a level. Like talk to people like doctors and scientists, right? Like just take it up just a, just a touch, right? Um, and so atheists, atheists have this thing. They say, well, God is not real. You can't prove it. Uh, except I got about a billion people who have the same testimony. Yeah. About a billion people have met him alive right now. I mean, throughout history, I have no clue how many. But about a billion people on the planet, right, was probably even more than that, can say, no, no, I've actually met him. He's alive. And the atheist argument is, I don't believe you. You all got together at some Comic-Con and, and, and made a false story up to trick us because I'm so important that you're all spending your time making up an entire part of your life so you can fool me. Like, you're not actually that important. Um, and like, we, no, actually, uh, we're not thinking about you at all. We're here worshiping Jesus, who one day you will acknowledge. Yeah. Now is the better time to do it. Do, do you understand that? Spiritual people have to understand you have to be spiritual to understand spiritual things, right? You have to be of the Spirit to understand the things of the Spirit. And we want to be people of the Spirit. Is that, are we? And so, so as we're in the Spirit, the goal is to get caught up in the Spirit. We pray the Spirit down, and we want to be caught up. We want to, we want to see the stuff. And so John starts writing about what's happening in heaven, and he sees, he sees worship. And the first thing he sees, if you read this, I'm going to go through this very quickly. First thing he sees is the throne, and he starts talking about how beautiful the one on the throne is. It's, and it's amazing. And he's, he can't even describe it. He's like comparing God to these gems and these jewel stones. And it's so beautiful. And the next thing he talks about are the four creatures. And he starts looking at the four creatures and, and he's trying to describe them. But while he's looking at the four creatures, you know what they do? They start singing to God. They start worshiping. They say, holy, 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 Revelation 4, 8, is the Lord God, the Almighty, who was and is and who is to come. So as soon as he starts looking at the elders, they start worshiping. He sees these 24 elders, right? After he saw the four creatures. As soon as he saw the four creatures, they start worshiping. He sees the 24 elders. Hey, I see these elders. Look at them all. They're all here. What do they do? Immediately, they start pointing to God. Revelation 4.11, worthy are you, O Lord and our God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things. And because of your will, they existed and were created. Whenever he sees something in heaven, it directs his vision back to Jesus. Always back to God. Always back to God. In Revelation chapter 5, there's this book that's presented, and it's got these seven seals, and, and an angel asked, who is worthy to open these seven seals? And John, being carnal, says, oh my gosh, there's nobody. Nobody's worthy to open these seven seals. And he starts crying. And then the elders, like, you need some elders in your life to correct you when you got some bad theology. You need some elders in your life because you're going to get some bad theology. John, in heaven, has some bad theology. Nobody is worthy to open the, the, the seals. And the elders are like, um, actually... I know you feel like you just got some revelation in heaven, but what you just got was false. Let me just, let me explain to you something better. No, I get it. I heard it straight from God. I was in heaven. So the elder says to him, he says, I cried, nobody's worthy. Verse 5, and one of the elders said to him, stop it. Some of us need some older saints to come to our life and say, just stop the crying, right? Like just, I know it feels like the end of the world. But your Instagram friend count will increase. It is okay. Get out of your depression. Things will get better, right? So the elder said, stop crying. Look, Jesus, right? Like that's the answer to half your, your things you're crying about right there. Stop crying. Look, Jesus, right? Stop crying. Look, Jesus. The lion is from the tribe of Judah. The root of David has overcome so as to open the book and its seven seals. The focus always goes back to God. That's when you're in the Spirit. You don't got to be in the Spirit to see your problems. You don't got to be in the Spirit to prophesy people's problems. You don't got to be in the Spirit to prophesy people's issues, their demons, their addictions. You got to be in the Spirit to prophesy their solutions. Amen? 
Seeing the problem is carnal. Seeing the solution is spiritual. And so after, after they say, you know, the book and all this, what do the angels start doing? Oh, by the way, let's worship Jesus. They start singing. Revelation 5.10, you have made them. Watch this. This is what he sings. You have made them to be a kingdom of priests to our God, and they will reign. He's talking about us. They will reign upon the earth. He's talking about your lost uncle that you think will never get saved. When you get in the Spirit, God starts showing you your true destiny. He starts showing you your true identity. He starts showing you the truth about who you are. And when you get that revelation, this is why it's so important to me that we encounter God in worship, that you don't just get a good teaching. I mean, you want a good teaching, go buy a book, right? We need to encounter God. We need to set an atmosphere where the world can come in and encounter God. We need to set a place where the Holy Spirit can dwell, where the church who got saved, and they're like, there's got to be more. There's got to be more. And they come and they encounter God, the Spirit. There's got to be a place that people can come and encounter more. And when you encounter that more, when you get that revelation, when God tells you who you are, the solution to your problems, or stop crying, that is when, watch this, we begin to walk in the Spirit. We take that, we make it part of us, and we, we walk with it. And they say, come on up. Does this make sense? This is why this is so important to us. This is why this is so important. This is supposed to be part of who you are. Watch this, Revelation 5, 13. In every created thing, which is in heaven and on earth, and under the earth, and on the sea, in all things in them, I heard saying, to him who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and dominion, forever and ever. When you read the book of Revelation, if you're not coming away from it saying all of heaven is worshiping God and that is the goal of earth and you're reading it wrong. That's, you're reading it wrong. So here's what I want to do. Stand with me if you would. I want to create just a minute or two. Shaba, wow. Mm, I'm feeling something good. Can I have the ministry team come forward? Some of you I just feel like need a little bit of help. Oh, no, you were right. I think you were right. Jesus Christ, that's where we're going. We're going to Jesus. Not yet, though. So we have our, our, our ministry team at the front. <laughs> wow. I'm feeling very good right now. I'm feeling like good things are happening in the room. Robin, why don't you come right over here so you can release that thing that you released earlier. If somebody wants prayer. Here's what's going to happen. We're just going to, we're just going to sing for a minute. We're not going to do this for a very long time. But I want you to do it now with an expectation of encounter. Are you ready? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, our King enthroned. All the praise is yours forevermore. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, our King and Throne. I believe encounters are beginning All to happen. All the praise is yours forevermore. You ready? You ready? Come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah, here below. All the praise is yours forevermore. We sing hallelujah. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Father, I pray that you would activate discerning of spirits. I pray that you would activate prophetic gifting. I pray that you would activate right now vision, Lord. The ability to see. Father, I pray revelation would be released right now. And then come on, receive it. Revelation right now in the name of Jesus. Father, you would release revelation in this room right now.
Come on, turn it up. All the praise is yours forevermore. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, come. In the name of Jesus, come. All the praise is yours forevermore. Jesus Christ, our King and throne. In the name. All the praise is yours forevermore. In the name of Jesus, your fire, Lord. but not really. Um, but if, if you can stay, if you have to leave, please leave quietly. If you can stay, I, wanna, I want us to go back into worship because I don't, I don't believe he's done this morning. Amen. So Anastasia, can we just sing that chorus one more time? Will we sing? I just want you to lift your voice. Just ask him. Jesus, Make me aware what's happening, what you're doing right now. You need to see it. you forward but um, before you go I just want to encourage you do what we talked about today walk in the spirit pray down the spirit get caught up in the spirit be aware of the presence of God be aware of Holy Spirit in your life do it today make a choice I want to be deliberate with it because if you don't do it today it'll just be another message that you heard from pastor however long ago and man I wish I had done that thing. Wonder if I'd be here now. No, go home and do it today. Amen? Tell your neighbor, do it today. Do it today. Can we give it up for Jesus one more time this morning? You are worthy.